As Haiti's president steps down, international forces, including U.S. Marines, will try to keep the peace. Hollywood rolls out the red carpet on its Night of Nights, the 76th Annual Oscar Awards. And an ancient language of the trading class survives even today in villages and now lives on on a silver screen. Thanks for watching CNN Headline News. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. The first contingent of U.S. Marines has been deployed to Haiti, and the U.N. Security Council has voted unanimously to deploy an international force for three months to restore order. The past 24 hours has been marked by chaos and political change in the beleaguered Caribbean nation. The head of Haiti's Supreme Court is taking charge of the government now that President Jean-Bertrand Aristide has resigned and left the country. President Bush is hoping the worst is over for the Haitian people. This government believes it is essential that Haiti have a hopeful future. Uh, this is the beginning of a new chapter in the country's history. I would urge the people of Haiti to reject violence, to give this uh, break from the past a chance to work. And the United States is prepared to help. At least one rebel leader says he welcomes the help of Marines and other international forces. France has also authorized about 130 troops to reach Haiti by Monday morning. The Canadian military has two teams on the ground in Haiti as well. More than half the delegates needed to secure the Democratic presidential nomination are up for grabs Tuesday. So the candidates weren't pulling any punches when they got together Sunday for their last debate before the Super Tuesday primaries. The debate was sponsored by the New York Times, CBS, and WCBS-TV. John Kerry, John Edwards, Al Sharpton, and Dennis Kucinich tackled several issues, including the Bush administration's response to the crisis in Haiti. I never would have allowed it to get out of control the way it did. This administration empowered the insurgents. At its best for the president and the administration, this has been neglect. In other words, they've paid no attention, they haven't been engaged. At its worst, they have actually facilitated the ouster of, of Aristide. Al Sharpton criticized the U.S. for blocking World Bank loans to Haiti. He said it set the stage for Aristide's presidency to fail. Saddam Hussein's government apparently extracted as much as $2.3 billion in kickbacks during his last few years in power, the New York Times is reporting. That's in spite of U.N. sanctions that were supposed to keep the regime in check. Under a 1997 U.N. program, Iraq was allowed to sell oil only to buy food and other relief goods. But a government kickback order was sent out three years later when limits on the amount of oil sales were lifted. The paper quotes Iraqi officials as saying that suitcases full of cash were routinely carried to the government ministries. Participating suppliers included Russian and European manufacturers, Arab trade brokers, and state-owned businesses from China and the Mideast. Meanwhile, Iraqi officials have reached an agreement on an interim constitution. An Iraqi governing council official says the draft charter recognizes Islam as a source of legislation as opposed to the source. It's expected to be signed Wednesday. Authorities have filed charges against a relative of a missing family in Mississippi. Ernest Lee Hargon has been charged with possession of methamphetamine as well as a firearm. But authorities say they expect more charges will be filed Monday. Investigators are testing the rifle he had with shell casings found in the home of his cousin Michael Hargon, who's been missing for more than two weeks along with his wife and four-year-old son. There was no sign of forced entry and family members say nothing was missing from the home. Authorities say they now believe the disappearance could be connected to an inheritance dispute between Michael and Ernest Hargan. Closing arguments in Martha Stewart's trial begin Monday. Prosecutors are trying to prove that Stewart and her stockbroker conspired to lie about the reason she sold her Imclone stock just a day before it tanked. They allege Stewart was tipped off that Imclone's founder was dumping his shares. Friday, the trial judge dismissed the most serious charge against Stewart, securities fraud. Stewart's lawyers said she had a standing agreement with her broker to sell the M-Clone stock once it drops below a certain price. Gay and lesbian activists are pressuring New York City to follow San Francisco's lead in licensing same-sex marriage. 
Marriage Equality in New York held a news conference on the steps of City Hall to demand that Mayor Michael Bloomberg and the City Council issue the licenses. Meanwhile, San Francisco's mayor is accusing President Bush of discriminating against gay and straight couples. Mayor Gavin Newsom claims the president is guilty of political showmanship. On Friday, the Social Security Administration announced it would not accept marriage licenses from San Francisco from any couple until the same-sex issue is resolved. More than 3,400 gay weddings have taken place in San Francisco since the mayor ordered marriage licenses to be granted to same-sex couples. Hollywood's Golden Knight recognized some of the film industry's biggest stars. Best Supporting Actor went to Tim Robbins for his work in Mystic River. And Renee Zellweger took home the Best Supporting Actress Award for her role as Ruby in Cold Mountain. Taking home the Best Actor Award, Sean Penn for Mystic River. And Charlize Theron grabbed the Best Actress Oscar for her depiction of serial killer Eileen Wuornos in Monster. Peter Jackson was named Director of the Year for Lord of the Rings Return of the King. And Hollywood bestowed its Best Picture Award on Return of the King. A deadly tanker explosion off the coast of Virginia is complicated by a major fuel spill. As the search for missing crew members continues, we'll tell you what the spill might mean for the Virginia and Maryland shorelines coming up. Now's the time to hop on over to Furniture Row Outlet. That's because we're having a leap year savings event. It's so big, it'll be four years before we can offer it again. For a limited time only, you'll get 29% off any one additional item with the purchase of any five-piece room group. That's 29% on top of our extra room group savings and guaranteed lowest prices. Plus, get no payments and no interest for one year. Better jump on these deals fast. Furniture Row Outlet's leap year savings event ends soon. In Yakima and Kennewick. What's in the back? It's kicks, can't you tell? Is it good? Yeah, very good. Has it got any marshmallows? Nah. Sugar frosting? Nope. Well, what's in it? I'm hungry. You'll see. What Kix has is a corn crunch that kids like. And Kix is low in sugar. That's what moms like. This is good. Yeah, but they're very hard to open. Yeah. Kix, kid tested, mother approved. Lightly salted and made with real melted Land O'Lakes butter. It's the microwave popcorn that tastes like real homemade. Only from Pop Secret. Don't just sit there. Pop Secret home style. Don't just sit there. Pop Secret home style. H&H Furniture Couch Potato Headquarters wants to talk about renting to own and saving money. Most rent to owns charge by the week. The payment sounds so low, they'll even throw in a free week's rent. But don't be seduced by the word free. In the end, you will pay longer and you will pay more. Be smart. Choose H&H Furniture's low monthly payments. The monthly payment is always less than those tricky weekly payments and you'll always have superior selection and guaranteed credit. It's easy to see you get more for your dollar at H&H. Coast Guard officials say most of the industrial ethanol that spilled from an exploded tanker Saturday has evaporated. Rescuers are still searching the waters off Virginia for the 18 missing crew members. Three of the vessel's crew members are confirmed dead. Six others were rescued. The tanker was carrying 3.5 million gallons of ethanol and 700 tons of fuel oil when it exploded. It sank about an hour and a half later. Computer models suggest the spill will wash out to sea and won't affect the shorelines of Maryland or Virginia. A Coast Guard spokeswoman says there's no reason to believe the explosion was anything other than an accident. Striking and locked out grocery workers in California are voting on a new contract. It differs very little from the one they rejected last fall. The contract calls for the workers to pay for some of their health benefits for the first time. It also includes a one-time bonus for employees, but no raise. The tentative deal would cover about 70,000 workers at three supermarket chains and Safeway stores in Southern and Central California. More than in four months. In Virginia, suspense is on the rise since one lucky lottery winner won the big Mega Millions jackpot last week. Now, no one has come forward to claim the $239 million prize. 
And just in case you were wondering what that money could buy, the winner could make 11 trips to the International Space Station at $20 million a pop and still have $19 million left to buy other necessities. The unclaimed ticket was sold at a convenience store in Stevens City, Virginia. I'm Steve Obermeyer with Sports. Some experts have hinted that Tiger Woods is losing it. It being the indescribable X factor that helped him win seven of 11 majors in one stretch. Hey, Tiger may not be winning majors, but head to head, this guy is still the man to beat. He proved it in the Accenture Match Play Championships against Davis Love the Third Tiger. It took him 25 holes before he finally took the lead, but when he took the lead, he went in for the kill. Look at this third shot on the par five. Are you kidding me? Six feet from the pin. Woods went up two up, but uh, Davis Love, he had some problems because a heckler was heckling him on the back nine. Uh, what kind of guy would have a problem with Love? 16th hole, Woods buries it for the win in his second straight Accenture Match Play Championship. Along with the Tiger earns $1.2 million, the biggest prize in PGA Tour history. I didn't quite have it today. You, know, I mean, you could see I was kind of struggling a little bit and uh, just had a hard time with my swing, but I, I really putted well, so uh, it uh, kept me in the ballgame. Yeah, he struggled to win $1.2 million. Bucks. Pair of hot teams, the Lakers, the Nets, Shaq, Daddy, not going to stop him, the diesel. Look at Jason Collins. Okay, and the foul. Hey, the, Dad, don't hurt yourself now. Shaq with 19 points. 14 boards. In fact, they tried to triple team Shaq. And he just kicks it out to Gary Payton, who had 16 points. Lakers led by as many as 28. They never trailed in this game. Kobe Bryant even getting into the action. Every Laker but one scoring in this one. They down the Nets easily, 100 to 83. Now to college hoops. And Florida State was 4 0 at home against ranked teams. Would Duke be number five? Look at this nice shot. Michael Joyner, the incredible follow slam. Pull it within one. Yeah, Duke only has a one-point lead. In the second half, Daniel Ewing slashing to Sheldon Williams the jam. Duke would hold on for a 70-65 to victory against Florida State. Syracuse, Pitt. Could Syracuse pull up the upset? Nice give there. Jerry McNamara and Hakeem Work, who knows exactly what to do with it. Cuse was up by five. McNamara, by the way, held scoreless throughout the first two halves. In overtime, he finally scores his first point, and it's a huge three-pointer. Syracuse goes on to win by a final of 49-46, to snapping Pitt's 40-game home winning streak. Baseball now, and Atlanta Braves closer John Smoltz says baseball's drug tests aren't tough enough. Smoltz says the sport's integrity is at stake, and the league should do something about it. Last season, baseball conducted random tests and found out that 5 to 7% of major leaguers are using steroids. And finally, college football's bowl championship series is adding a fifth bowl that's going to increase the access for schools not part of the six big conferences. It should make its debut in the year 2007. We'll have more sports in 30 minutes. I'm Steve Obermeyer. A check of the day's top stories is just ahead and later. You can hear it spoken on the big screen, but almost nowhere else on earth. Tracking down the passion's tongue when headline news continues. I'm in debt way over my head, but I don't know where to turn. I get offers to lower my monthly payments and get out of debt fast, but I don't know if these companies are reputable. It just sounds too good to be true. A friend told me they only lowered her payments by like $6, and they didn't even pay her bills on time. I'm really scared, but I'm even more confused. So I end up doing nothing. Your fears are well-founded. There are millions just like us who don't know where to go or who to trust. That's why a professional debt management organization has published Debt Free for Good. And they're making it available free to people like us. Did you know that in one year, over 9 million people called credit counseling companies for help? Debt Free for Good gives us the power of knowledge so we can learn to make the right decisions. I wish I had read this years ago. Don't work with anyone until you've read Debt Free for Good. Call 800-353-4455. For your copy, it's free. Call 800-353-4455. He's the weather guy. Natchez leaders are taking steps they say will help bring more tourism to their city. John Cap ABC Wednesday at John Cap ABC Wednesday at 5. See what city leaders plan to do in order to attract more visitors. Find out how these new plans might affect local businesses 
and what these new changes could mean for the community. Wednesday at 5. Paula's on now. Monday and every weeknight, 8 Eastern on CNN. Now for a quick check on our latest developments. President Bush has ordered U.S. Marines to Haiti to help bring order to the country. The U.N. Security Council followed suit unanimously approving a multinational force to go to Haiti for up to three months. President Jean-Bertrand Aristide left the country amid a violent uprising. A rebel leader says he'll welcome and cooperate with the international force. The Democratic candidates blasted President Bush Sunday for not acting sooner to avert a crisis in Haiti. In their final debate before the Super Tuesday primaries, the candidates also took aim at each other. John Edwards denied rumors that he's courting frontrunner John Kerry for a chance to be his running mate. And the Coast Guard says it plans to keep searching for survivors of a tanker explosion off the Virginia coast. 18 crew members are missing. Three others were killed, but six were rescued after the ship exploded and sank Saturday. A senior White House official says the administration is stepping up its efforts to capture or kill Osama bin Laden. President Bush and his national security advisors are remapping their strategies, and the military is preparing to aggressively search the area along the Pakistani-Afghan border. Timing is key. Soldiers want to take advantage of the springtime melting of snow in the tribal areas where bin Laden is believed to be hiding. The official says they're using some of the same strategies that eventually led to the capturing of Saddam Hussein. A van carrying more than 1,000 pounds of explosives has been seized in a village east of Madrid, Spain. Spanish police say the Basque separatist group ETA was planning to attack the Spanish capital. Two suspects were arrested. ETA is considered a terrorist organization by the European Union and the U.S. Since 1968, it has killed 850 people in its violent campaign for an independent state in northern Spain and southern France. The group has been weakened in recent months by scores of arrests in those countries. Abu Sayyaf, a group linked to Al-Qaeda, is claiming responsibility for a ferry fire in the Philippines. But military leaders quickly dismissed the claims, saying the rebel group is just looking for publicity. The fire broke out on board the ship early Friday. More than 700 passengers were rescued, but about 100 are still missing. And divers and search crews are doubtful any survivors will be found. One person has been confirmed dead. No surprises here. The Passion of the Christ was the number one film at the box office this weekend. Since its debut Wednesday, it's taken in more than $117 million. Whether the actors will win Oscar nominations remains to be seen. But they certainly deserve awards for linguistics since they had to learn a language that's all but dead. Rula Amin takes us to one of the last places on earth where you can still hear Aramaic. <laughs> In Mill Gibson's new movie, The Passion of the Christ, the story of Jesus' last hours on earth, what they will experience is a film shot entirely in Latin and Aramaic, a language that has barely survived. But here in Ma'lula, most of the 5,000 residents speak the language they are among the very few people left on earth who still actually converse in the ancient language. In school here, the children learn Arabic, the official language in Syria. But as they leave their classrooms, they switch to Aramaic. We do a field survey. How many of them can speak Aramaic? It's hard to be accurate, but it's safe to say a pretty high percentage do. But the youngsters admit not all are fluent. It's difficult to be. Aramaic was at its height in the 10th century BC, but it wasn't a national language. It was the language of traders, much like English is the language of commerce today. Slowly, it was replaced by other languages, especially after the Arabs conquered this region more than 1,400 years ago. Arabic became the dominant language, but not in Ma'lula. There are different theories that attempt to explain how did people here manage to preserve such an ancient language. One theory says 
It's the remote and isolated location of Malula, which protected it from outside influence. Most people here can speak Aramaic, but nobody knows how to write it, except this man. George Rizallah is a teacher of Arabic whose passion is Aramaic. He has worked for years to document an Aramaic alphabet so that people can start reading and writing Ma'lula's own dialect of Aramaic. It's all based on his personal efforts. How accurate or scientific are his findings is not exactly clear, but he's trying. This is our heritage, he says, and people of this town must take care of it. Father Lukhuri says, what people speak here is the proper Aramaic, and he hopes the movie gets it right. The film's dialect coach, a linguistic professor and Jesuit priest says, translating the movie was a labor of love with far-reaching benefits. Uh, there are many Aramaic-speaking communities, uh, especially those used for liturgy, uh, Eastern Christians on, who have said to me, you know, Aramaic lives, more power to it. It's brought world attention to Aramaic and uh, to the problems of the, of the survival of the language. For now, at least, it lives another day. Rula Amin, Malula, Syria. Well, the stars are out in full force in Hollywood. We'll have some Oscar tidbits coming up in just a minute. Keep it tuned to Headline News. Schwab sign. Free beef with the tires you buy. A 40-year tradition that's become a February thank you to our many customers. A tribute to farmers, ranchers, and the beef industry. Party pack or right out of the freezer. Company-wide, Les Schwab is giving away more than a million dollars worth of USDA-approved free beef. A big extra at no extra charge. Great buys on tires, too. The West's largest selection in stock, starting at just $19.95. Free beef now at the Les Schwab sign. Man, I'm changing the station. Don't touch my radio. Dude, you hit his car. So, boys, what do you have to say for yourselves? Uh-oh, better get Mako. Mako repairs the damage and restores the value with everything a body needs, plus paint for every budget, like ambassador service for $229. Well, at least Mako doesn't dent my wallet. Hi, Robert Douglas, Permanent Exteriors. Have you been thinking about all the chores you need to take care of around the house this year? Like scraping and painting the exterior? And would you like to get out of it? Call Permanent Exteriors and find out how you can. For as little as $38.76. So stay out of those flowers and get rid of the paint, ladders, and brushes forever. And remember, at Permanent Exteriors, we don't get paid till your home improvement's been made. Well, some disappointing news for women who suffer from sexual disorders. Pfizer says it will not continue testing Viagra on women. The company says it tested 3,000 women and wasn't able to prove the drug helped. It will not ask the FDA for regulatory approval for Viagra to treat female sexual arousal disorder. A Pfizer doctor says the disorder is much more complex than impotence in men. All that glitters isn't gold. Sometimes it's emeralds, rubies, or even armor. Alicia Stanford spoke with a woman whose taste for authenticity has one or two Oscar nominations. It was done quite late in the piece. Nyla Dixon is the recipient of two Oscar nominations this year. 
one for her work in The Last Samurai, the other for The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. The principle behind the third film really is resolution in terms of design. We wanted to keep the soldier element with this costume. Um, it was very true to the idea of, um, of the age, and so hence the chainmail with the piece of battle armor over the top, but with the um, you know, stars of Gondor and the white tree of Gondor imagery all um, incorporated into it. Liv Tyler's coronation costume proved a different type of challenge. To find the right green for this was a long dye process. It seemed to have both the softness and the luminosity that we wanted for that moment because I still wanted it to be almost a bridal gown at the same time it was a coronation gown. So I knew that this character should come from this crown and it, the first drawing was a a huge butterfly that came out from um, behind her head and then it slowly came down into something more refined but the butterfly image is still there at the back. What do you want from me? What do you want for yourself? When she took the job for The Last Samurai, Dixon had to hit the history books to find out what they wore and the flea markets to look for authentic materials. Some of the um, kimono that was still in the flea markets from the 1930s were actually the same sorts of patterns that were used in the Meiji era in the, in the 1870s. So it actually gave us the blueprint that we needed for the fabric patterns. All of the kimono were hand-stitched, just as they were in the time of the samurai. Making the armor took a little more research. And this is the most elaborate of the samurai armor, um, and as it should be. He is the warlord, he is the leader. Um, and so we styled this on one of the most ancient forms of samurai armor. Here's an interesting bit of trivia about this kimono. The person who made it is the same person who creates kimonos for the emperor of Japan. From the humble to the scary to the royal, Nyla Dixon knows how to clothe a big screen epic in style. Alicia Stanford, CNN, Los Angeles. We'll be back with a look at the day's top stories in just a minute, including the latest on the crisis in Haiti. President Bush orders the Marines to lend a hand there. Headline News will be back in a moment.